Welcome to the Innate Immunity Module. And in this talk, we're going to look at how the complement pathways can be regulated. We're going to look at different mechanisms that help regulate complement activity so that the host cells are protected when the complement system is activated. The complement proteins are a collection of more than 30 different soluble proteins that are present in blood as well as bodily fluids. They were initially discovered in vertebrates, however now we know that homologs of some complement proteins are also found in invertebrate organisms. A lot of complement proteins are thioester proteins, and when we look at vertebrates, the complement proteins are mainly synthesized in the liver. Now the complement proteins work together and form a cascade that's called as the complement pathway. The complement pathway aids in the pathogen elimination as well as induction of inflammation. These complement proteins on their own are not antimicrobial in nature, but when the complement pathway gets activated, that is when pathogens can get eliminated. Now when a pathogen is able to overcome the epithelial barriers of the host and enter the host, that is when the complement system is activated. There are three main pathways of complement activation that have been studied in vertebrates. The first one is called as the alternative pathway. The second one is the lectin pathway. And then we have the classical pathway. Now the complement system is an ancient form of host defense. And so when we look at the evolution of the complement pathways, the alternative pathway evolved first followed by the lectin pathway, and then the classical pathway. One thing to note about the complement pathway is that there are some components of the complement pathway that are unable to differentiate between host cells and pathogen. For example, the C3B that is generated as part of activation of the pathway will bind to any hydroxyl or amino group even if it is present on the host cell. So it has no way of differentiating between the host cell or a pathogen. And thus the healthy host cells have to have mechanisms to protect themselves from complement activation. This is where complement regulatory proteins come into play because they aid in protecting the healthy cells. Complement regulatory proteins can be soluble plasma proteins or membrane bound proteins that are present in the host cells. What they do is they will target the complement pathways at different steps and thereby protect the host from complement activation by normally deactivating the pathway in the vicinity of the host cells. There are three ways by which the complement can be activated and they are through the alternative pathway, the lectin pathway, or the classical pathway. Now one way to deactivate the complement is to prevent the activation of these pathways. And so there are mechanisms that target that first step of activation. When these pathways do get activated, they all converge in the formation of an enzymatic complex called as the C3 convertases. So if you want to disable the complement pathway, a good target is to disable the components that make these C3 convertases. Another way to disable the pathway is to disable the components that make the C5 convertases, which is also an enzymatic complex that plays an important role in the complement pathway. Finally, the C5 convertases help in forming components that will give rise to the membrane attack complex. So one way of deactivating the pathway is to target these components so that the membrane attack complex will not be formed. One way to deactivate the complement pathways is to prevent their activation in the first place. Host cells make a protein called as the C1 inhibitor, which is a soluble protein and belongs to the serine protease inhibitor family or the serpent family. The C1 inhibitor targets the complement C1 protein, which plays an important role in the activation of the classical pathway. 
The C1 inhibitor causes the C1R and C1S that are associated with the C1Q of the complement C1 protein to dissociate so that now C1Q cannot initiate the complement pathway. Similarly, the C1 inhibitor can also cause the mass proteases to dissociate from mannose binding lectin and thereby disabling the lectin pathway. The C1 inhibitor prevents the activation of the classical and the lectin pathway by interacting with the proteases that play an important role in the activation of the pathways. Another complement regulatory protein that helps in disabling the complement pathways is factor I. Factor I is made by host cells and can cleave C3B and C4B in the presence of other proteins that function as cofactors. These cofactors can be soluble or membrane-bound proteins. And let us first look at some soluble cofactors. Host cells make a protein called as the C4 binding protein or C4BP. And what the C4 binding protein does is that it's able to target the C4B2A complex and it interacts with the C4B part of the C4B2A complex and displaces C2A in the process. Now C4B2A is a C3 convertase and without C2A it loses its enzymatic activity. Furthermore, by binding to C4B, the C4B binding protein is able to recruit factor I, which can now cleave C4B and thereby the C3 convertase is disabled. Factor H is another factor that is able to regulate complement activity and helps factor I in cleaving C3B. Factor H can bind to sialic acids that are present on host cells, and this binding results in the displacement of capital B small b from the C3 convertase. Now in the alternative pathway, the complex of C3B and capital B small b results in the C3 convertase activity. When factor H binds to this complex, it's able to displace capital B small b, and this lets factor I bind to C3B and degrade or cleave C3B to form the inhibitory or I C3B. An example of a membrane cofactor that helps factor I in mediating its function is the proteins MCP or CD46 and complement receptor 1 or CR1. Both of these molecules, which is CD46 and complement receptor 1, are membrane proteins and they're able to mediate the dissociation of C2A from C4B. Once C2A is displaced from C4B, factor I is able to bind to C4B and mediate its cleavage. Another way to disable the complement protein is to inhibit protein-protein interactions. And the protein called as DK accelerating factor, or CD55, is a membrane-bound complement regulatory protein that is synthesized by host cells. Now the DK accelerating factor is able to inhibit the C3 convertase activity by displacing capital B small b from C3B and it also is able to displace C2A from the C4B complement fragment. By doing so, it prevents the interaction of C2A with C4B or capital B small b with C3B and hence it disables the C3 convertase activity. Another way to disable the complement pathway is by inhibiting the formation of the membrane attack complex. A protein called as vitronectin or the S protein is able to bind to the complement proteins that aid in the formation of the membrane attack complex and thus it prevents membrane binding of the C5B67 or C5B678 or the C5B6789 complexes and thus the membrane attack complex cannot be formed. 
CD59 is another example of a cell membrane protein that is able to inhibit membrane attack complex formation. It does so by binding to the complement protein C8 and thereby prevents binding of the C9 proteins and this results in the inhibition of the formation of the membrane attack complex. Since the membrane attack complex formation is prevented, the host cell will not undergo cell death. The way the host has evolved mechanisms to protect itself from complement activation, pathogens have also evolved mechanisms to evade the complement system. One such way to evade the complement system is by preventing the activation of C1. Now C1 activation triggers the activation of the classical pathway. So by preventing C1 activation, the classical pathway can be inhibited. An example of a protein is the staphylococcal protein A, which is able to bind to portions of antibodies that bind to C1. By not allowing the antibodies that are bound to the pathogen to bind to C1, the classical pathway is not activated and thus the pathogen is protected. Another way to deactivate the complement pathway is by inactivating C3B. Proteins like factor H binding protein and pneumococcal surface protein C are able to recruit the complement regulatory protein called factor H to the membranes of the pathogen. By having factor H closer to the membranes of the pathogen, the C3B that's deposited on the pathogen is cleaved by factor H and thereby the pathogen is protected. Another way the pathogens use to protect themselves is by deactivating the C3 convertase. The protein called POR A is able to recruit the C4 binding protein to the pathogen membrane, and the C4 binding protein binds to C4B and releases C2A from the C3 convertase complex. Due to this, the C3 convertase is unable to function and thus the pathogen is able to protect itself. With this, we come to the end of our talk where we learned about different mechanisms of regulating complement activity. This involved inhibiting activation of complement pathways or cleaving complement proteins. We also looked at mechanisms that resulted in deactivating the C3 or the C5 convertases or inhibiting the formation of the membrane attack complex. So these are different ways by which host cells are able to protect themselves from complement activation.